Okay, in the last video, we were working with this expression when we take the dot product of the del operator with the scalar times a vector function L. And this is the expression that we got right here, and we want to examine this in more detail now. So, let's see, here we have, from this part, we have a partial of F1 with respect to x. Here we have the partial of f2 with respect to y. Here we have the partial of f3 with respect to z. And that, if you remember from our introductory videos when we consider the divergence of vectors, that is the divergence of this vector here. Um, let's just make some room here. As we showed in the introductory videos, del dot f, that's called the divergence of the vector, and that's equal to the partial of f1 with respect to x plus partial of F2 with respect to Y plus the partial of F3 with respect to Z. And that's what we have here. Except that each time each one of these terms is multiplied by T. So what we're going to have to do here then we must both this. This is not Z times this. This is V times this expression. So let's get rid of that. That wouldn't make any sense at all. We're taking the derivative with respect to z. So that's phi out here. And we have phi times this term and phi times this term. So this part of the expression then, that is just del dot f. times phi. Now what about these other terms? Here we have the partial of phi with respect to x, the partial of phi with respect to y, and the partial of phi with respect to z. But this is multiplied by f1, this is multiplied by f2, this is multiplied by F3. So how could we obtain those terms? So let's see. Suppose we had vector F like this. These are its components. And if we took the dot product of that, Just with the gradient. And that would be the dot product of the partial of phi with respect to x plus the partial of phi with respect to y times the j unit vector plus the partial of phi with respect to z times the k unit vector. If we take this dot product, what do we get? I dot I is 1, so we have F1 times the partial of phi with respect to X. That's this term. If we take, if we move along, keep taking the dot product, J dot J, that's 1. We're going to have F2 times the partial of phi with respect to Y. That's this term. K dot K, that's 1. We have F3 times the partial of phi with respect to z, that's this term. So, this part of the expression then is equal to F dot the gradient vector. Or we could write it either direction in this case. So, here in this we have. And that equals that expression there. And that 
is what we had written up here. So this, in fact, is a valid expression. We went and proved it by actually doing it by the numbers, not just by kind of going through this funny business here. But the point that we want to make with this video is that this line of thinking is correct. Let us just back it up to this line here. That when we have the Dell operator here and it's multiplied on two entities multiplied together, indeed, we can think of it then as a typical differentiation type situation because the Dell operator is a differentiation operator by definition. So we can think of it then as, all right, we'll take the Dell and we'll take the dot product. But in each case now, it's not just a Dell operator, it's sort of a specified Dell operator. Here it's operating only on the feet part of the product. Here, or, or the scalar part of the product. Here, it's operating only on the vector part of the product, which when you think about it then, leads to these two expressions. Now let's just go through that thinking a little bit more carefully since we know indeed it puts us on the right path. So, here, we're taking a dot product and the gel operator is supposed to operate only on feet. Well, it cannot do it like this. That's invalid. So the only way it can operate on phi is to have it like this. So this is what this expression means. Likewise here, now it's supposed to operate only on the vector f. Of course, we can take the dot product of the del operator with f. And so it's supposed to operate only on the vector f. So then we would have this just simply multiplied by phi. So thinking of it in these terms here, indeed, is correct. And as you can see, it gave us this uh, vector identity. It just kind of popped right out. Whereas before we had to go through several steps, several laborious steps, to show that indeed this is true. And we bring this to your attention because when we get to other videos where we take more complicated um, vector expressions and look for our vector identities, we're going to use this line of thinking a lot. And in fact, if we had, say, this expression here, then indeed, we can write it out like this, that the cross product of the del operator with phi f, then this is equal to del operating only on phi cross this product plus del operating only on the vector part of this product. So, what does this mean? Well, again, of course, we can't have del cross phi, because phi is just a scalar, so that doesn't make any sense. So, this has to mean this. And from here, then, we have this expression. Del operates only on the vector f, so this is just simply multiplied by p. And indeed, that is the vector identity for this expression here. So, that concludes what we wanted to say so far then uh, about the del operator for different types of vector identities. But the main point that we want to establish is that thinking of it in these terms here, when we have two functions or two entities multiplied together, you can split it up thinking of the del operator as operating only one of these two. 
and then thinking on those, along those lines, ask ourselves specifically what kind of an expression would this give us and what kind of an expression would that give us, just like we did up here when we were taking the dot product. And when you think along those lines, it can be a real shortcut when we had to deal with complicated vector expressions and want to try to determine a vector identity that might be associated with them. And come back, and ask for some more videos, and we'll put these principles to work now as we get to more complicated expressions.